not available what it is going to do it is going to block it is going to be waiting unnecessarily why do you want your code to be waiting unnecessarily well okay so now this entire thing what we have written the stock price fetcher is like a simulation of the real world scenario where you call external api stock apis uh, and then you get the price there's a lot of different bunch of complex logic that happens hi everyone welcome to my channel code with ease by varsha today we will talk about callable and futures we have been doing a playlist on multi threading and we have also done threads coding questions so today's topic is going to be a little different it is going to be more towards concurrent programming concepts so if you have not understood so if you have not uh, followed threads for a long time please go through this for a quick refresher go through this playlist some of the questions for a quick refresher and then come back to this video because this requires understanding of threads bit of synchronization mechanism executor service mainly we have also covered executor framework in detail in this video so please go through that so today we will talk about callable and futures we'll talk about what is callable what is future and what is the difference between callable and runnable but is that enough no because we also need to see a code demo to understand how can we implement callable and future so we'll do some stock price fetching kind of a real world example uh, where we'll try to simulate the calling of an external api using callable so we'll see how can we make use of executor service callable and future and write some code on that but first let's get to the basics of what is callable callable is a functional interface in the java.util.concurrent package it represents a task that can be executed asynchronously and potentially return a result what does asynchronously mean asynchronously would mean anything for which we don't have to wait for any result it will be done and we will leave it the leap of faith that it will be done and we will get the result getting the result is a key point we'll come to that like runnable it also represents a unit of work but it can return a result or throw an exception so here we have talked about the difference so runnable is also representing a task that a thread can be doing and callable is also another task the difference is it will return a result the callable will return a result callable tasks are typically submitted to an executor service so like we have mentioned in the beginning you need the concepts of thread pool and executor service we have already covered that in the previous video of concurrent file reader so please go through that for understanding about that we will make use of that again in the code demo video and next is when submitted it returns a future object which can be used to retrieve the result or handle exceptions so this is the biggest difference between runnable and callable which will come to in the next slide also now the question is why should we use callable instead of runnable we have understood the difference is that callable will return a result and runnable will not why do we need to use like the very basic difference is callable can return a result whereas runnable does not and this is crucial when you need the output of a task it is not always that you'll submit the task and you won't require the output we might require the output of doing the task whether the task was done successfully whether you need an acknowledgement all of that will require so like a result of a computation you are doing a sum of certain numbers and you need the result of that so that is an important reason why you have to use callable sometimes instead of run next is callable can throw checked exception and that is a way to handle the exceptions that can occur during task execution but in case of runnable checked exceptions were not allowed to be thrown from the run, run method so error handling is very important when you make productionized applications and it is not possible that there will never be any error and exception that can happen when you are submitting the task to the thread so you also need to do some sort of exception handling next is when you have multiple tasks that run concurrently you want to collect the result efficient we will see the example of that when we will do the code demo so that callable when combined with executor service it makes it easier to manage the concurrent computation this is the keyword and retrieve the results in a coordinated manner so you are giving a task to the threads and you are waiting for the result to be done. so while you are waiting you have given bunch of tasks you want you are waiting for them to be done so that you can get the output what is the output of their result that they have, that they have given to us so this is the reason why so that is the reason why understanding difference between callable and runnable where to use which one is important so that you can make it best suited for your users next is what is future so future is also another java interface in the java.util.concurrent package it represents the result of the asynchronous computation that may not be immediately available now this is a keyword over here may not be immediately available so what happens is when you are giving a task to be executed asynchronously you do not know when the task will be completed so future helps us in capturing the value or the output of the task but it may not be immediately available so you'll have to wait for that to be available you have to check whether it is available or not so all sort of things we will see that in the code demo so again just like callable future is just another interface in the same package but it just helps us in representing what is the result of the asynchronous task that we have given it helps to capture that result 
Next is it is returned when submitting the callable task to an executor service. We know that and it is used for managing and retrieving the result. What are the methods? So the important method is get method, which will retrieve the result. So we will do future dot get. We will get the result. Or it can wait for the task to complete. So get method is a blocking method. Why it is a blocking method? That also we will see the demo. The next method is is done. So so see if you are trying to do a get future dot get and the result is not available. What it is going to do? It is going to block. It is going to be waiting unnecessarily. Why do you want your code to be waiting unnecessarily? That doesn't look good. So that is why we can make use of the method is done, where we will check that is it done. If it is done, only then give me the result. And there is also a cancel method which helps to cancel the task if it has not started. So we'll mainly see the get and the is done method today. Next is the code demo. So we will implement a program that uses executor service to invoke multiple callable tasks and obtain the result as a list of future objects. So it's going to be a good hands-on practice to see how callable future and executor service work together. And the real-world use case for this, what we will do is we will use the executor service to execute the multiple callable tasks to fetch stock prices from different sources. We will not do because we will leave that like a simulation. Suppose you are getting the stock prices from different sources and uh, you are doing that concurrently. So let's say you are getting the stock prices of five stocks and you are getting it from external APIs. So we will try to simulate and assume that those tasks are the callable tasks, which is getting the uh, result from the external API. We will write the callable tasks, but we will not define any external API. But finally, we will return the result of what we are getting using future. So in that way, we will cover all the aspects that we have talked about. So let's move to the ID and write the code for that. Here we are into the ID. I have just written a basic construct of here are the list of stock symbols, just random names of the symbols. There's a list of futures. Into this list, we will attach add one by one all the futures. And here's the executor service like I discussed. Execute a service in which the fixed number of threads will be two threads, which is going to do all the callable tasks. So there will be five callable tasks, one for each stock, and then two threads are going to do do that at a time. So that is why your fixed thread below two threads. Another thing which we also need to do is we have to define the callable task now. So I'll just define a class called stock price fetcher. This is the task. Like we have done earlier also, any task we used to say that it has to implement the runnable interface. In this case, we will say that it has to implement the callable interface. We also have to pass in the generic type of double. Why? Because the stock price is a double. The data structure, the data type is a double. That is what we are going to return. And once it's done, we know that whenever we implement an interface, we have to implement all its method. So call is the method. In the case of runnable, we had run method, which we had to override. So another thing which we also need to do is we will define a constructor where we can pass in the name of the stock. So just define a constructor and just say the stock symbol, basic constructor initialization, the constructor is ready now. What do we need to return? We need to return a random price. So I'll just use the math.random and just multiply it by 1000 just to get the double value. Okay, so now this entire thing, what we have written, the stock price fetcher is like a simulation of the real world scenario where you call external API, stock APIs, uh, and then you get the price. There's a lot of different bunch of complex logic that happens, validation, sanity checks, all of that. We are not doing all of that. It's just a simulation of the actual stock price fetcher, which happens in the real world. To make it more real world, what we can do is we can add some kind of a delay in that thread dot sleep. We will do like it, let it sleep for five seconds. So for the entire processing that it is doing, let it sleep for five seconds. So after five seconds, we'll get the result. That's it. What we'll get? This is the result that we'll get. So our callable task is now ready. What we need to do is now we need to submit the task. The thread has to start doing the work. So we'll just have a for loop doing stock over the stock symbols. Now we have to define the callable task, like initialize it. We have created the task, but it is not yet initialized. Okay. So what we will do is we just create an object of this stock price fetcher task we could do. Remember, we have to pass in the name of the stock. So here in the constructor, the parameter will pass in the name of the stock. So my caller, sorry, the task, callable task is ready. Now we have to submit. So we'll call executor.submit. Now see here, submit has three different overloaded versions. One is it takes a callable task. One is it takes a runnable task, but what we have already seen. 
and then it takes another generic type of result. Each of them returns a future. So in this case, we will pass in our stock price fetch it ask. If you want, we can also do this that we will have a future and we can just capture what value it is returning over here. Just to print it out, we can just print it out what is it returning. Don't assume that once you submit instantaneously, it will be done. So, okay, we'll come to that. So, once this is done, another thing what we need to remember, we have a list of futures. So, over there, we have to add our future also, whatever we are getting. So, that's it. So, this is happening over all the stock symbols. So, five stocks are this, five times. Five tasks will be submitted basically to the executor service. Once that is done, our work is completed. Now, asynchronous processing comes into the picture here that we have submitted the task. The executor service is taking up all my tasks. I don't have to worry about when it will be done, how it will be done. Only when I need the result is when I have to see how can we get it. So after that, I can shut it down. Because once the executor submit uh, for service takes the task, it's done. After that, what is our work? Now our actual work begins. What is our work? Now the work is we have to start printing out the result. So over here, I'll just loop in through all the, uh, the stock symbols. Over here, okay, couple of things. We have to understand that we cannot just simply print out the result. We are saying that there is some computation time it takes, five seconds is asleep. So instantaneously, if I just try to print it out, if I do something like printing price for stock, and then I'll just say, uh, what was the name of that? Stock symbols dot get i it's a list it's ordered so we can make use of the i index value and then you can say uh, printing price for stock equal to whatever the price is how do you get the price we will get it from we have a list of futures from that list in in that list each entity is a future object from the future object futures dot get i is going to return us a future object from there we will do a get where we will actually get the return value okay so this is how we can do. Now this is a blocking method. This we have already covered before. So I'll put it inside a try catch. I'll come to it. You don't get confused. Stay with me for a while. I just keep it like this, but we shouldn't be throwing. We should be handling using loggers and all of that. Anyway, so what I'm saying is we could have done like this, printing price for stock in this. The problem is this get method is a blocking method. What does it mean? It says it waits, un it waits if necessary for the computation to complete. So your program will look like it is hanged. Five seconds, if it is waiting for each task, it will simply look, it will simply look like your program is hanging. So instead of that, what we should be doing is we should try to use the is done method. But we'll come to it. Let's first have one run of this, whatever we have written so far, uh, and then let's come to it. So let's try to run this. Okay. See. What we were trying to print is we were trying to print all the future. So every future, that is five futures, the status is not completed because you're just submitting. The actual work has not happened. Now the work is happening, printing price for stock this and this and this. Like this one by one, all the stock price are being printed. So if I just introduce more delay, we will be able to see this. So all of them are complete. Now see, there is no result. It's completely blank because now it is not completed this portion of the code it is trying to printing price and then now see two threads so two entries came now it again went for the sleep of 10 seconds now again two threads after the 10 seconds again two threads only will be printing so we got for tyr and efb so two two threads are only running so 10 seconds delay is there and that is how we are able to see that the user whoever the end user is it appears to him that the program is not working okay so is done is a good way to overcome this non blocking behavior so what we should be doing is instead of doing this, we can do while get of i. That is my future object. So while it is not done, until then we can just simply just for the sake of your understanding. Obviously, in production code you will not do, but just for your understanding, while it is not done, I am waiting just to show. Only once it is done, it will come outside this while loop, and then it will call the get method. I don't have to call the get method and be stuck over there. No. So it should be something like this. So this is how the is done method is also being used. So you will say unless it is done, you will keep on waiting. And since it will print it instantaneously, here also we can introduce a sleep of let's say two seconds. Two seconds. Now let's run this. Now we'll see the difference. 
Okay, so it's saying waiting. Again, waiting. Waiting. Three times. Four times. Five times. Now it printed. Why? Two fives are ten. So 10 seconds it is waiting. So every time it is waiting two seconds. So total wait is 10 seconds. So after five printing, five times printing the waiting, it has printed the price for two. Then it again waited for 10 seconds. Then again it printed the two prices. So this is what is happening behind the scenes. So this is the reason why we have added this up. So now we can understand from this that overall this is how we use callable future executor service in real world to get computation to do asynchronous computation and get the results over the period of time using the necessary methods whatever you need is done get and all of that and where to use get why not to use the get method what is the use of is done method all of that we have also covered so that is all for today thank you so much for watching